Hi, everyone, and welcome today to Spiritual Perspective. And today we're dealing with the subject about an outcast. Do you feel like that sometimes in life? Do you know someone that maybe feels like an outcast? They're somewhat totally disassociated themselves with people and society and really feel in a bad situation. And maybe people that are looked down upon. Maybe you feel like people look down on me. Listen, stay tuned today. I've got something really important to share with you from the book of Matthew chapter 8. And hi everybody, I'm Carlton Duck. And yes, we're going to be dealing with the story of an outcast today. And today you may find yourself in this story. But also I want to encourage you today that God today can turn your life around. There's nothing too hard for our God. I don't care how deep you've gone into sin. I don't care how bad your life is messed up. I don't care what has happened, who's rejected you, who likes you, who doesn't like you. It doesn't make any difference as a God who loves you, and he can make a difference in your life. So glad you're with us today, and this this is a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church, and I'm the pastor of Gethsemane Baptist, and I'm Carlton Duck, and I'm so pleased that you've taken the moments to share the word with us today, and that uh, I pray it'll be a blessing to your life. We would love to see you at Gethsemane Baptist Church. We just celebrated the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But don't we do that every Sunday? Certainly, because I'm glad he arose and he's victorious and he's defeated sin, death, hell, and the grave. And he is our victory today. If you're looking for victory, look to Jesus because he can bring you through whatever you are facing. Friend, 411 Blue Ridge Street is our location Easily found one block off of Lakeside Drive, Route 221. We're near, not far, about a block away from the main entrance to the University of Lynchburg. Not hard to find us. Turn on Blue Ridge and the church is one block up. At worship times, 9.30 and 11.30 a.m. every Sunday. And we'd love for you to come and bring your family, bring your kids, bring your teens. Because we have a program in Pew that your kids can use. Our service is only about an hour to an hour and ten minutes in length. And that uh, you will find, you will get a wealth of encouragement and inspiration in that service. And your kids can get some great great things accomplished in their life, even through what we provide for them through the Kitty Care Kit. So come and see us. Also, visit me on our website, and that's at AliveGBC.com. You'll see that address right on the bottom of the screen. And you can visit that. You can go on our uh, Facebook account. You can go to our YouTube account and watch some of our programs. And also, you can join me uh, on my Facebook page, Carlton Duck, every Wednesday night, 5 p.m., Topic Talk. And what are we doing? We're providing you, on the first part of the week, you can go on my uh, page and vote on what topic you'd like for me to discuss. And then we will tally up the votes. And then that Wednesday night at 5 p.m. on Topic Talk, that's what I'll deal with. Additionally, we uh, provide at 7 p.m., we come back and provide a season of prayer I mean, we pray live right there uh, before you and with you. And I would love for you to join us for all of that. Share that with your friends and neighbors and in your family. And I know that you'll be mightily blessed of the Lord. Let's talk about today this outcast and uh, realizing this today that many people find themselves as an outcast. Maybe it's because of prejudice or disrespect. Maybe because of sickness and, you know, there's a big spin that we could go on and on and on and try to identify why people feel and they're an outcast. So you see some things happen here that we're going to meet a man uh, that basically was in a terrible disease. In Matthew 8 and 1, he was come down from the mountain. Great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, uh, thou... Thou canst make me clean. And you know what? He knew the right one to go to, didn't he? Leprosy was a terrible condition in the first century. And uh, our term of leprosy today is known as Hansen's disease, and where it literally eats the flesh and the bone and, and deteriorates the body, and it's gross and it's smelly and it's horrible. I know when I was in Thailand, 
some years ago when I was in the military during the Vietnam era that uh, one of the things, they had leper, leper camps there and where those uh, people, that because of their leprosy, they had been placed as an outcast. But leprosy, it brought fatigue. It brought some uh, real pain to the body, and it was very intensified. And to make matters even worse, victims would, would lose their ability to feel. They had no feeling in their fingers or their feet. And if you uh, lived during that time, you would refer to a leper, you know, basically, secondly, only as to basically a corpse. It was just a walking dead person in one sense of the speaking. And so if, you know, these things uh, in the process of the loss of fingers and the feeling and everything else, people became an outcast. So Jesus meets this man that just like uh, this man, you know what Jesus did and what he provided. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thy clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. That's verse 3 of eight, Matthew 8. And so Jesus saith unto him, See thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Now, this was a miracle, needless to say. And let me just make a sidebar issue on this a moment. You know, people think the days of miracles are gone. But let me tell you what. He is the God who was the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he's still a miracle-working Jesus today. He can work a miracle. And if nothing else, salvation is a miracle that he works in your life by forgiving you of your sin, of rejecting him and saving your soul and writing your name in heaven and being your Savior, being your Lord, and being the best friend that you could ever have this side of heaven. So this, this miracle was provided and given by Jesus. Here's a man that was completely an outcast from society, and yet he was made perfect by the healing hand of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then there's an, uh, another issue we see. There's another scenario that's found in verses 5 and 6. And when Jesus was uh, entered into Capernaum, there came him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. So the second outcast has a tremendous and great need. And this need we see as a centurion that meant that he was a commander in charge of at least, oh, of at least a hundred soldiers. So he had great responsibility. He had get great prominence. And this captain likely served in the army and he, uh, of course, had accomplished, and he did, and he was a good leader. But yet, he comes to Jesus with a great need. I don't care how great you are in the eyes of men, we all have a common need in our life, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus tells him, he says, I will come uh, and, and heal him. And so realizing that, I want you to know what happened in this story. The compassion of Jesus towards this outcast basically and notice the faith of this man that came to him was recognized in Jesus today. He recognizes faith, and today he knows who's his servants. He knows who's trusting him. He knows who's living for him. He knows who's sold out to him. Are you one of those? Can Christ count on you? Are you on the firing line for your faith today? Are you not ashamed of Jesus today? Listen. He can turn anything around in your life, but he can only do that today through a relationship that we have with him. And then he talks about, you know, an unlikely candidate for grace. And that third scenario is found in uh, Mark, uh, rather Matthew 8 and 14. And Jesus was coming to Peter's house and he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. And he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them. You know, here's a story of sickness, a miracle today. Here's another outcast. I mean, how many scenarios of outcasts do we have in our world today? Maybe you feel like one. Maybe you think, man, I just feel like an outcast because of my decisions, my, uh, my addictions, and, and because of my bad life, and because of my past, and all these. Do you know there's a solution for all of that? And that solution is found in the Lord Jesus Christ today. And you may think it's strange today that, you know, an outcast today can have their life turned around. 
I'm telling you, God can work a miracle in anyone's life today. And therefore today, we may think of ourselves as second-class citizens or not having any value or not any worth. Do you realize with God, He sees worth in you today. He sees value. But He can only develop that worth and value when you come to Him and let Him take charge and control of your life. What Matthew is doing, he's listing, and he gave us three individuals today who were outcasts in society, who lived outside the realm of acceptance, and Jesus cared for them, and he ministered to them, and he met the need of their life. I'm telling you, this same Jesus will do that for you today. He can turn everything around wrong in your life, and every mistake and every bad decision and every sin that you've committed, you realize he will forgive you for that? You don't have to live like you're living. It's not too late. Are you still alive? Exactly. You are. So therefore, it's not too late today. We ought to be reminded that God loves all people. And today, He is eager to meet with those people and to change their life. So these miracles have value by themselves today. And they basically, they stand alone as to pointing to the glory of our God and what He can do. And I'm really convinced today that Matthew wants us to meet these miracles together. And he wants us today to share these miracles. And he wants us to see what the miracle hand of God can do in our life. If today you feel like an outcast, I want to first remind you of something today. Jesus died for you. And today he can grasp your life. And today he can turn your life around. You've got to come to the realization of who you are. And realize that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And that none of us are righteous. None of us today are holy. But God changes us through the blood of his son today. Jesus is is much more about than just we look in God's word. And we just absorb ourselves with the physical healing that he provides. And he does that. No doubt. But listen, that's not all there is to Jesus He starts first with healing your spirit, your soul, your heart, your life by coming and giving you life. Where we were dead in our trespasses and sins, we are quickened, we are given life through him today. And you may say, well, pastor, what are the lessons then that God wants to teach us in these words that you've shared with us today from God's God's, uh, book of Matthew? Well, there are several lessons that he wants to show us today. One, he is Messiah that God has promised. God promised him. That goes back to Genesis 3.15, doesn't it? And realize that's the first prophetic word that we receive from God. And as soon as Adam and Eve had sinned in the Garden of Eden, we find that God promised the Messiah would come and he would make all things new. And therefore, as after creation was cursed and tensions fell on mankind, we realize that Adam and Eve, of course, God then pronounced that they would die as a result of their sin. See, that's the product, a byproduct of our sin. It's death. And so therefore today is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. So realizing that, thank God that this is not the end of the story. God just didn't pronounce condemnation and death But he also pronounced life and liberty through what he would do through this one that would come who would be called the Messiah. So God then insisted that he would send a Messiah that would be ultimately uh, the redemption for all mankind. And so that's found in Genesis chapter 3. And you can read that there. So the Old Testament then is a a proclamation of of the prophecy of a coming Messiah, a coming Savior that would come, and he indeed today would be victorious in defeating Satan and winning the victory over sin. So God raised up a man, and we realized he would birth a nation, and that ultimately the birth of Messiah, and that man's name would be called Abraham. And so you can go to Genesis 12, and you can read about how that God told Abraham he would make him a great nation. But realizing there's a hidden message in there. That hidden message is the greatness comes through God, through the Lord Jesus Christ. How will God bless all families on the earth through Abraham? 
and it would be because Abraham birthed the nation of Israel. And so Israel then gives birth to who? A Messiah, a Savior, who is called Christ the Lord. And he would come and he would die on the cross. And there he would provide salvation for the entire world through his death and what he accomplished at Calvary. He died your death and mine. He took our shame, our judgment, our wrath. He took our punishment. He took our pain. He took our sicknesses. He took everything that was against us. And he nailed it to the cross. And there we have victory in him today. You today can look back through the old pages of the Old Testament. And you can find there there is a proclamation of a coming Savior. We turn into the New Testament in the book of Matthew. And we find that then there is the fulfillment of that proclamation that was made by the prophets of old. So Jesus would fulfill. He didn't come to destroy. He came to fulfill what God had proclaimed. So God then used the king who was named David. Just walking you through the pages here for a moment. And God promised David a perpetual throne that would last forever. But ultimately because of his intentions, you realize the Savior, the Savior, the Messiah, he would reign forever from whose throne? The throne of David. And so therefore today, the whole Old Testament is preparing for Jesus to reign. And let me tell you what, he is king of kings and lord of lords, and he is the reigning God today of the universe, of heaven, of everything. He is a sovereign God. He is the God who is in control. So the Old Testament is a story of God building a nation to give birth and realizing that Savior would come to be the Savior of the world. So when we come to Matthew 8, I said all that to bring you to this. Matthew is writing to say, Jesus is that Messiah. So the proclamation through the pages of the Old Testament by Abraham, by David, and by others, we realize then we see that Messiah is fulfilled and comes forward in the book of, of Matthew. So he is the culmination of the Old Testament and realizing he is the one who would yield today that, uh, who would yield to the authority that was set on David's throne, who would be our Savior, who would be our Lord, and who would become and be all authority in our lives. So Matthew 5 and 7, Jesus gives us the authority today, and we find the teaching of Jesus and what he gives us and what we really need in our lives today in what is called the Sermon on the Mount. But in Matthew 8, we find that Matthew writes to demonstrate that Jesus has the authority. And let's not forget that. For Jesus is the Word, isn't he? I mean, you read uh, John 1 and uh, you read the account that's given there of what happened, that he is the Word. Well, let me tell you what. The Word is Jesus and the Word was Jesus. And therefore today that Word has healing power, doesn't it? It has the healing power to save your soul, to deliver you from the clutches of Satan, to give you a home in heaven, and to give you a Savior and a Redeemer in life that would walk with you through this perilous time in which we're in. And thank God no weapon formed against us can prosper, as Isaiah said and declared. So therefore today we have the Savior with us, and he has the authority today to heal. So you need first your soul healed. You need to be saved, born again. And I know those are common terms in our society today. But I'm going to tell you, it's not a church that saves you. It's not a preacher nor a priest. It's not a baptistry. It's not your good works, your lineage, or anything else. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He was hung up for our hang-ups of sin. And so in, and we see here that Jesus then has the authority to heal. And not only can he heal you in salvation today, but he can heal your body today. I am not a physician. I am not a doctor. I, am not the, I do not possess the power to heal you. I do today 
I can pray for you and call on the God who can heal you. He is called Jehovah Rapha in the Old Testament, who is a healer. And he can heal your body today. He can heal your mind. He can heal your relationships. He can heal everything about you, your past, your present. He today can do all things because nothing is too hard for our God. So we see that he teaches and he gives us on the Sermon on the Mount. And he talks about the authority to heal. And then we see that he walks on water. He calms the sea. And he does all these great things. And he has the authority to forgive. That's the power that he possesses today. So Matthew is establishing Jesus as the Messiah. And so God promised that I might be that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Elijah, the prophet, saying himself, uh, and saying himself, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. That was Isaiah. And so therefore, that proclamation that Isaiah made in Isaiah 53, Jesus fulfilled what he proclaimed. 700 years before Jesus came, Isaiah was proclaiming what he would do. Man of sorrows acquainted with grief. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes were healed. Glory to God. I'm glad he is that, and he's able to do that today. So the leper was right. He was cleansed by Jesus. He was changed by Jesus. And Jesus has authority over disease, dilemma, difficulty, over panic, pain, and problems. Over anything that you face in your life, over sin and struggles and situations, whatever it is, he's greater than that. And so when you're in Christ today, you have that one living within you that's greater than whatever you face. Maybe you're going through a struggle. Maybe you feel like an outcast. Maybe you feel like your life is just on a treadmill and you're not going anywhere. I'm glad God can turn all of that around if you'll put your faith and your trust in him. He's the Messiah that everyone needs. Everyone needs the Lord. None of us are exempt from that. Approximately 9 billion people on planet Earth. Every one of those people need the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm glad today that we have that hope that is found in him. I'm glad that we have one that is made a way for you and I, that we don't have to die. We don't have to be an outcast. We don't have today to struggle in life. We can place our confidence and our faith in him. And today we should desire a God today. You know, I don't believe in prosperity theology. I just don't. I don't believe in this name it and claim it mentality. I don't believe in all of that because you know what? It's you trying to do it. But you today have a God who's greater than all of that. I have a God that said he'll supply my every need according to his riches and glory. I have a God that will save me. I have a God that will protect me. I have a God that gives me surety, stability. I have a God who's prepared a place for me. I have a God who will guide me and direct me. I have a God that is a friend that will stick closer than a brother today. Friend, listen, we don't need prosperity theology. We need Jesus today. And we need him in our life, in our homes, our families, our churches, our culture, our government. We need Jesus greater than we've ever needed him before. But in this era in which we're living, it seems like people are turning away from him. But I believe that God has raised up some people that are still looking to and trusting the Lord. And I'm glad that we can put our confidence and our faith in him. And he's a God that can turn all things around if we will learn today to place our confidence in the one that the Father said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased today. I'm glad today that through his death on the cross, he made a way for you and I where we can have stability, strength, help, and encouragement, and grace in our lives. I'm glad he defeated death. I'm glad he defeated the devil. I'm glad he defeated every dilemma that you will ever face in life today. Jesus is not only the Messiah, God's promised one, but they understand today he is the Messiah that every person needs in their life. The greatest threat that we have to, to humanity today is not the coronavirus. It's not the malady today of all the issues of the world. It's the malady of sin that has infected every human heart today. Listen, friend, there's only one way that that, that 
that sin can be taken care of in your life that's defeating and destroying and brings death. And that's the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ today. I want, to, I want you to understand God loves you today. And that's why he sent Jesus to die for you on the cross. He can change who you are. And even in your position of thinking that you are outcast, I'm glad he will bring you in. He will cleanse you, change you, and then he will deliver you. And today he will mightily use your life for his glory, honor, and praise. It's all about putting Jesus first. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. I pray the teaching that we've shared with you today from Matthew 8 has been encouraging to your heart in your life. And I really pray that you will come and visit with us and worship with us and stay with us here at Gethsemane Baptist Church, 411 Blue Ridge Street in Lynchburg, one block off of Route 221. That's Lakeside Drive, one of the most traveled roads in and around this community. And we'd love for you to come and celebrate Jesus with us this Sunday. And that worship time is 930 a.m. and also 1130 a.m. And uh, you can also catch us on live streaming on Sunday at uh, about 11.50. In addition to that, you can join with us on Wednesday night at 5 p.m. for Topic Talk. And I would encourage you to go to my Facebook page, Carlton Duck, around Monday, Tuesday, and vote on the topic that you'd like discussed and talked about. Additionally, we come back, and that's at 5, we come back at 7, and we have an earnest time of prayer, intensified prayer time for all the requests. And we give all the praises, we give glory to God for those praises of how God has mightily worked in the lives of people. So come join with us and be a part of what God is doing in this powerful and church that he is lifted up and is using for his honor, glory, and praise, Gethsemane Baptist Church. Continue to watch us on a live TV. Tell others about that. That's now in Lynchburg. And so, uh, you know, folks that live in Lynchburg, tell them about they can get a live TV and all the other great programming on Chantel Cable if they simply will inquire about it. So anyway, all said and done, I've really enjoyed being with you today, and I pray that we brought a blessing to your heart and your life on spiritual perspective. Again, I sure hope to see you this Sunday at Gethsemane Baptist Church, and I know your heart will be mightily blessed. Listen, he made a way for you. You're not an outcast. If you put your trust in Jesus, you're a child of the King, and you can rejoice in our great God and our Savior, the Lord Jesus, today. God bless you. Hope to see you at GBC, Gethsemane Baptist Church. Keep looking to Jesus, and God bless you today. Thank you.